I'm Michael, and welcome to this episode of How To Metrology. In this episode, we're going to talk about the Mar Pocket Surf series. Right now, I've got a Mar Pocket Surf PS1. It's a little bit older model, but the functionality and the keys haven't changed too much. And I'm sure a lot of people out there watching this video still have a Mar Pocket Surf 1. The Mar PS1 uh, comes with a few components. You've got your base drive unit. You've got a stylus that's removable. You also have on the back of the drive unit a place for a USB port. For data output, you have a printer port that comes from MAR, and you also have a charging port. There's a battery power supply to keep it charged up for you when you're not using it. The system also has four soft keys that are red uh, to do the controls to operate through the menus, and then green keys on each side that allow the users to do commands such as start a trace, power on, and power off. It also comes with a convenient cradle. You can take the cradle and snap the unit right into it and adjust it to the exact height of whatever it is you're measuring. So without much more, let's go through the menu system, learn what the different soft keys do. Pocket Surf operates with four red soft key buttons as well as two green buttons on the side. Power up is simply done by pushing green button on the side. It'll take a moment to boot. Once it powers up, you'll see that it has uh, your current settings for your travel length and your cutoffs. It also shows you how much battery power is left. The most recent measurement <clears throat> isn't posted because it's been a while. I want to begin by going through the various menus and the different settings. To do that, you'll push a combination of the green key and the LT key. When I've pushed that, it shows measuring condition is the first area that we can begin to make changes in the system. To change measuring parameters, simply push the green button and the LT button at the same time. The first option becomes measuring conditions. If you use the up and down toggle keys, which are the R, Z, and RA numbers, you can toggle down with RA. Record contents is available. Tolerance limits. Basic settings. Profiles. Results. And measurement conditions. We'll go through some of these that are most commonly used. To use to get into measurement conditions, push the right arrow key, which is the LTLC red button. N is the first parameter you can edit. To edit a parameter, again, you push the right arrow key. And now it's highlighted the number 5. N is for the number of cutoffs. This shows five. If I arrow down, it will go to four, and then three, and then two, and then one, and back to five is the number of cutoffs. Five is a standard cutoff. We're gonna leave it right there. You can, again, use the right arrow key to complete the end settings. The left arrow key lets it know you're finished and goes back to measuring conditions. If you wanna investigate measuring conditions some more, again, just push the right key you're in there. The down arrow key will move you from N, which is your cutoffs, to LC, which is standard. The LS and a number of other variables can be changed from this screen. Left arrow key, which is the F1, gets you out of that menu. Back to measuring conditions, you can scroll down. The next one was record contents. This allows you to change what you want for your record contents. Again, right arrow key moves into that. This allows you to set up for your printer. If you have an auto printer, there's a port in the back of this. You can plug in your printer from MAR. It's turned off because we don't have one. RA, and begin now to go through the parameters. So RA is a parameter that you could output in your record. RQ, RZ, RZJ, and so on. It will scroll through here to so a number of parameters you can choose from. These are currently turned off. Any one that you want to turn on, simply use the right arrow key to turn it on, and it will show when you do your measurements. If you're finished here, use the right arrow key, or rather the left arrow key to exit. 
To go down from record contents, you'll get the tolerance limits. This allows you to set your tolerance limits for RA or RZ. Basic settings, we'll go in here and investigate that. Basic settings allows you to change your language. Currently we're set in English. You could go to French, German, Japanese, or a number of other languages. I prefer to stay in English. If you change this and end up in Japanese, you could end up in trouble not being able to read the menu in return. You can also change your unit of measurements. In this case, we've got inches. You can change that to millimeters just by going with the right arrow key and toggle that up or down, goes from millimeters and back to inches. Left key exits that. Down from unit allows you to change your standard. In this example, we're using this ISO standard for calculations and evaluations. You could change that. That number can be changed to the ASME. It can be changed to Motif, JIS, or back to the ISO parameters. You can also do timeout. This is how long the screen turns itself off from inactivity to save battery power. Blocking is something you can set up to block out unauthorized users by pro programming in your own code number here. Don't write that on dry erase board, by the way. Battery power. This shows 67%. And it also shows you that you can program your F1 key. In this example, the F1 key is set up for R max. You could program that to output a different parameter if RA and RZ were more, less than what you wanted. Pickup type is the stylus that's on here. This is a MAR 350 style stylus. These styli can be changed to longer or shorter styli with deep reach or narrow reach uh, options in them from MAR. You can go to the calibrate mode, which we'll come back to shortly, which shows you the correction value for the most recent calibration. It also has traverse. Traverse is your setting to make the stylus move when you press the play button. Some instances you may move the part and not want the stylus to trace. Then you would have traverse off. You can adjust your date and your time to get from basic settings. The next is profiles. Profiles is where you can set up your basic settings, your parameters, your travel length, your cutoff length, and then you can save that setting as a repeat. So the next time you need to measure a similar part, you simply recall those profiles. The results window allows you to change uh, the results. You can save the results, you can delete results, you can re recall results. Measuring conditions is where it returns to when you're finished. Next, I wanna go through how to calibrate a stylus. To calibrate a stylus, you need to go to the basic settings window, use the right arrow key to enter it, Use the down arrow key to go from language to units, to the standard, to timeout, blocking, code, until you finally get to the calibration setting. When you've reached calibration, use the right arrow key. It's going to tell you that your current calibration nominal is in this example, 9.5. Yours may be different. To find out what your calibration nominal should be, you can look underneath the unit And there's a sticker on the bottom that should list the calibration parameter for your particular system. The calibration roughness standard is actually built into the drive unit. To use it, you'll need to rotate the stylus. To rotate the stylus, it telescopes in and out. You'll need to make sure that you're completely telescoped forward. To rotate the stylus, you're going to need to make sure that the drive unit is completely telescoped forward. If it's partially in, you won't be able to rotate it. So push it all the way forward. You'll feel it click and stop. You can rotate it. So it actually points upward toward the screen. Then you will retract it back inside. And as you do that, you will find a groove. And inside this groove, is the roughness standard inside. So with the roughness inside, 
you can then use the calibration parameter settings and do a calibration. Once you're ready to calibrate with the stylus in contact with the internal roughness patch, just press the green button to begin the trace. You'll hear it driving and on the screen you'll see a count up in the corner as it does a trace. When it's complete, it indicates end of measurement. It's doing a second trace for a comparison to the first trace. It may take several traces before it's finally completed with its calibration process. When it's finally complete with the calibration process, it will indicate a new correction value, in this example, minus 9%. With that, you know that you're calibrated and ready to begin measurements. Press the return key, which is the left arrow key, to get to the calibrate mode again and again to back to the main screen. To do a simple measurement on a flat surface, set the part down on the table and adjust the driving unit down till it makes contact with the part. Once it's made contact, don't over travel or you'll bend the stylus. To make a trace, push the green button and it will start. It requests start the question mark, I'll press it again to affirm. At the end of the measurement, it returns from whence it came and gives us our reading, in this case, we're in millimeters, it's 0.08 RA. To change and toggle from that, I'll push the RZ. That gives me 0.63 microns for RZ. And if I push the F1 key, that was set up to give us our max in this particular system, and that is 0.96 microns. So how would you measure a round part with a unit designed to measure flat parts? Simple. There's a groove on the bottom of the drive unit. That V allows you to lay a part flat and do a trace parallel to the axis. I'll show you. First, be sure you're turned on and ready to take your measurement. If you are, you can lay the system face down. To protect the buttons, Mar thought of applying small raised pads. These raised pads prevent the buttons from making contact with your surface. With the drive unit upside down and the stylus now facing up, you can lay your shaft on top of it, making contact with your stylus. Press the green button to drive it, and it'll perform the trace for you. Upon completion, if you take the part off and look on the screen, you'll see the measurement on that surface. Another task that may be important is changing a stylus. To change a stylus in your system, carefully grab the stylus by the base, not the diamond tip, not the diamond tip, but grab the stylus by the base and pull it straight out. It will unplug. There's three pins. Those three pins line up with three holes in the base. To install the same stylus or a new stylus, Simply carefully slide it down until it aligns itself. Push it in until it stops. You should never have to force this. Once it's in place, the front should be even with the front of the drive unit. Thanks for watching this episode of How To Metrology and learning a little bit more about the MAR uh, Pocket Surf series. If you have any more uh, questions or needs on the MAR Pocket Surf, check out our website. We've got accessories like replacement styli and cables if you need them. We also have the new current models on sale at our website. So for now, I'm going to put it in my pocket and go surf.